friends. It's the Zen Witch with another unboxing video in my unboxing jam. And today I'm feeling particularly magical and witchy because we are unboxing the Alistair Crowley Thoth Tarot deck, Ordo Templi Orientis in small card size. This deck uh, was, I'm not sure if it still is, available in like large large format. So this is the small size of this deck. Booklet of instructions. It says Ordo Templi Orientis. Uh, the booklet of instructions includes essay by Lady Frida Harris and forward by Stuart Kaplan. Complete 80 card Crowley Tarot deck. Include, includes three renditions of the Magus or Magician cards. So here's the universe. And let's see, there's got a lot to say on the sides here. Sometimes, all right, let's start on this side. Alistair Crowley, Crowley Crowley. Crowley, be, I want to say Crowley because of uh, Good Omens, but uh, Crowley is the way I always heard it. So I don't know if I'm right or wrong. Let me know if you know. Alistair Crowley was born on October 12th, 1875, and he joined the Her Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn in 1898 rising rapidly through the grades of the order. Crowley poured the entire contents of his magical mind into his tarot deck. Neither Crowley nor the artist of the Thoth tarot deck, Lady Frida Harris, managed to publish the tarot deck during their lifetimes. Crowley died in 1947 and Lady Harris died in 1962. The Thoth tarot deck remained unpublished until 1969. Sometimes, several versions of the same card in the Crowley deck were painted by Lady Frida Harris to achieve the desired effect. This edition of Crowley's Thoth Tarot deck includes the original three versions of the Magus slash the Magician card. An original essay written by Lady Frida Harris is reproduced in the instruction booklet that accompanies the deck. The essay provides unique insight into the artist and her interpretations of the Tarot of Crowley. Let's jump in. And I, I, this is one of the oldest decks I've had. You can always tell when the, when the tabs are gone because those are like the first things that fall off. It has now, of course, been reinforced by my compulsiveness here. Um, instructions for Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot deck. Let's see what the copyright is on this one. It said 1969, but this says 1978, 1983, 1987 by Stuart Kaplan and Donald Weiser. That's the text. That is the text. Um, the symbolism, traditional postures, attribution of the cards, and the planetary, zodiacal, and elemental colors have been given to me by an expert who has studied the tarot for 40 years and to whom my thanks are due for his courteous cooperation, Lady Frida Harris, July 1942. So there's a, um, I'm not going to read the, I'm obviously not going to read this whole thing. The tarot could be described as God's picture book, or it could be likened to a celestial game of chess. The trumps being the pieces to be moved according to the law of their own order over a checkerboard uh, over a checkered board of the four elements. Interesting. Interesting. I mean there's a lot to read here. The tarot and its applications. The first thing was was that just introduction. It's Alistair Crowley's Thoth Tarot deck. Um, Crowley is often described as the most advanced and influential occultist of the twentieth century. He's an extraordinary man whose ideas have profoundly affected modern occultism. His life's work was an attempt to synthesize the diverse teachings of the world's religions by extracting the essential kernel of truth shared by them and developing a system of attainment suitable to modern humanity's search for God realization. He called his system scientific illuminism and coined the phrase the method of science, the aim of religion, to indicate that freed from all historical and cultural bias, the nature of truth is one. Indeed the method of science and the aim of religion. I like that. He left behind a voluminous body of writing, most of which is now available in published form. And it's got a lot more to say about that. And then it's got a lot to say of um, about the Tarot and its applications and lots and lots and lots. And then there's a big spread here. And then we have, then we just kind of go straight into the trumps, as they call them, the majors, 
and then we go into the minor. So that if you look here, this is in typical of early U.S. games decks when it talks about Stuart Kaplan doing the writing. Come on up here. Come on, camera. God, I need to get my frickin' camera reading glasses. All right, fuck that. So just a little bit. Um, it doesn't say anything reversed. And we go through the major arcana right here, and then we're into the wands. And again, um, it does say ill-dignified for the minors. Um, there is a category called ill-dignified, but that doesn't show up for the majors. That's interesting. And since all the cards are talked about in you know such short form, I'm going to find out what the rest of this book is suggested reading list for Kabbalah, Tarot, Magic, and the Law of Thelema, Thelema. A Brief Commentary, The Tree of Life, 78 page. And here is Frida Harris's essay. So it's quite long. The Trumps, the catalog. Oh. I don't know. I'm very confused. So we go through the cards again. So I guess this is her book in the back. Wow. Uh, exhibition of the 78 paintings. Okay. All right. Well, it's been a hell of a long time since I've looked at this deck. How often have you heard me say that? Sorry. All right. Blocking card is one of the cards of the mages. Let's look at... Um, So there are two, there are three magician cards. So when they say an 80 card deck, it's because there are two extra cards of the magician or the magus. There's this one. Kind of awkward looking. You know, he's in a pose, which I'm sure has some significance, but it's still very awkward. We see Mercury. Uh, he's obviously Mercury with the wings on his heels, and there's an Egyptian image at the bottom there. Then we have this magus which I gotta say is one that I like. There. With the Caduceus, again, Hermes. Hermes slash Mercury. And then here's the third magician. And he is very mercurial as well. So you can tell that, I mean, the cards definitely have a lot of symbology in them. A lot of traditional esoteric stuff. The Magus, here is the Fool. And behind behind the names, you can see very, very faintly it says Trumps. And then we have the Hebrew character on the left and a symbol on the right. Not sure what that is. And looking at it, you know, look at all the symbology. There's a dove. There's all these kind of wheels and things, and he's got horns, and there's a caduceus-ish sort of thing there as well, and a butterfly, and there's a something, a cat, like a tiger biting his leg, so that's sort of like the traditional fool. His little pointy shoes sticking up. So that the and this looks like a salamander down here, or an alligator. So the imagery is complex and not standard. High Priestess. They definitely like symmetry. I mean, we have gems and we've got fruit and animals, the Emperor, the Empress. Interesting coloring, the Emperor. So, the, you know, the color palette isn't really broad in each card, but it certainly is distinctive. So we definitely get the idea of the emperor as being warlike. Look at the rams for Ares. I'm trying to read the symbolism on his jacket if I can, and I can't. I see, I see like dragonflies and the lamb, like the lamb of, like Jesus lamb. Wow. And back to the high pre or to the empress, we see birds and swans and a lotus and a moon. So, now we'll go at it at a pretty good clip. 
here's a richer card as far as color goes. Bulls everywhere and an elephant and an eagle and a, I think elephants and and a bull and a lion. Okay, so we have the four fixed signs here as well and kind of the hand position and a key and a star and there's all kinds of stuff. Okay, Hierophant. Here's the lovers. Do you see those two hands? Okay, it's like two people, like a king and a queen getting married. Chariot. adjustment. So justice is adjustment. Very interesting. This is the hermit. Really stylized, geometric. Fortune is the wheel. Lust. Hmm. So instead of strength, we get lust. Fascinating. Hanged man. Hanging from an onk. Death, this is a cool card. It's always one of my faves. Art. Temperance is called art, the devil, the tower, star, moon, more Egyptian symbolism there, the sun, the eon. So this is the judgment card. It's called the Aeon and the Universe. Into the suits, wands, ace of wands, and now you get to see, ta-da, they have keywords. I like it. So they're pretty much pip cards. Um, for the minors, and I'm going to keep them down here so I can whip through a little bit faster and see the words easier. This is dominion. The three is virtue. Four is completion. Five is strife. Six, victory. Seven, valor. Eight, swiftness. Nine, strength. And ten, oppression. The, it's a it's a good progression. I love the keywords in this deck because they really do progress you through the energy of that suit and they make imminent sense to me. So this deck can really inform uh, your reading of other decks of your standard tarot. So the Princess of Wands, the Prince. So instead of King, Queen, Page, Knight, we have Princess, we have Prince. Clearly Wands are Fire. We have the Queen. Okay, well, blah, blah. Prince, princess, or princess, prince, queen, and then knight. Not king. Knight. As soon as I saw the horse, it was like, hey, wait a minute. Come on. There we go. The knight. So we're looking at warrior kings here. The ace of cups. Look at this cup. This card. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, it's just beautiful. Okay. The two is love. Three, abundance. Four, luxury. The five is disappointment. Luxury. That's very different from the normal four of cups, right? Disappointment. The six is pleasure. So again, different, not the reminiscences of regular six of cups. Seven is debauch. So seven is usually, you know, the seven different cups and they each have something different and it's kind of daydreaming and stuff. This is debauch. Eight is indolence. 
which means kind of laying around. Nine is happiness, and ten is satiety or satiety, satiety, to be satiated, the state of being satiated. Then we have the Princess of Cups, the Prince, the Queen, and the Knight. Ace of Swords. The two is peace. Hmm. The three is sorrow. Four, truce. That's an interesting meaning for the four of swords. Truce. Lay your swords down. There's another, I think it was the cosmic deck that had the same sort of vibe, not really truce, but it was like people sitting, having sort of a picnic and their swords are laid out so they're not, you know, holding their swords, they've been laid down. Defeat is five, six is science, seven is futility, so instead of the thief card we've got futility, we've got interference for the eight, and in the background here you see you've got the name of the suit behind the word in gray. Okay, so Eight of Swords is interference. Very different from the usual Eight of Swords. Cruelty is nine and ruin is ten. Prince, Cess, Prince, Queen. It almost looks like she got jeans on. <laughs> Who do you know that wears your boobs that low? Well, me. <laughs> okay. Knight of Swords. And he's definitely on the move. And then we move to the Suit of Pentacles. And right away, you can just see by the coloration, the earthiness of them. And this desk, this deck, they're called Discs. Discs. Ace of Discs. The two is Change. The three is Works. Four is power, five is worry, six, success, seven, failure. Okay, seven of pentacles usually shows things fruiting and abundant, but exhaustion, this is outright failure. Prudence is eight, and nine is gain, and ten is wealth. Then we got the princess and the prince and the queen. Look at that headpiece. How bad do I want it? And then I would have to have a couple of servants to come and hold them up <laughs> while I walk. And then there's the king. Okay. Time. To, yeah, I don't like this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna swap out. Which one do you like better? I like this dude. So we already took a peek at the book. Let's let's do a little bit of a reading here. They shuffle like early US games decks very easily and well. Mm-hmm. Fire of Azrael, do your thing. Let's do more. More of my favorite shuffles. I could sit and shuffle cards like this for hours. It makes me happy. And I mean, you really do feel them going one after another on each side, so I know they're getting thoroughly mixed up. I really like that. It bugs me when I shuffle cards and then they come out in sequence. I mean, of course, that can happen when you're shuffling anyway, when they're even well shuffled, but it buggeth me. It makes me feel like they're not well shuffled. All right, let's do... Give me a message for my readers. Give me something that makes sense. How's that? <laughs> I ask so much. All right. Ancestors, guides, guardians, Spirit of divination, come on in and give us some information and a reading that makes sense for all of us. 
what do we need to know right now is what I'm asking. Oops, and I've gone back to shuffling that way. Okay, three times through here, and then three off the top. What do we need to know right now? Okay. We have pleasure, satiety, and the sun. Oh my God, and again and again and again, the universe is just telling us to find our pleasure with everything that's going on, to find our joy in life, to not let the stress of the externals rob us of our internals, um, to become internally referenced. So, you know, when your external values, um, what am I trying to say here? When you're, when you're not dealing with like people in business that are giving you feedback about how great you are all the time, um, when you don't have people to go to, how am I doing, how am I doing, you have to become internally referenced and, and how do you know internally when you're doing okay? And that is, um, is there joy in your life? You know, are you, um, can you take pleasure in things? Uh, and with pleasure and satiety, we have the six and the ten. Let's look up. Let's give the book a go. Let's give it a go on both, uh, in both little parts here, the catalog and this one by Stuart Kaplan. So it, with Stuart Kaplan, we have the six of cups, pleasure, well-being, harmony of natural forces without effort or strain, ease, satisfaction, happiness, success, fulfillment of sexual will, beginning of steady increase, but beginning only, and ill-dignified, it says vanity, presumptuousness, and thanklessness. So that would be if it's reversed. Um, let's go here. Okay, Six of Cups in uh, Lady Lady, Lady Frida Harris's meanings. Pleasure, sun in Scorpio, Tifareth. The cups are full but do not overflow. Here is love for personal gratification. So it's just, you know, taking pleasure in your life, loving what's around you. And if you don't love what's around you, change it. Just change it so that you do love what's around you. A lot of people's homes uh, these days look worse than any hotel room, less welcoming. Nothing on the walls, there's no color anywhere, there's no idea of decoration or design, there's no a sense that I have set these things up to be the way I love them to be, to nurture me. It's just, here's where, all, here's where we put all our shit. So if your home is just a place where you put all your shit, it's time to start turning it into your pleasure palace, into a place that you love to be in, and a place that reflects your personality, and a place that feels good when you walk in. Um, I used to never make my bed, ever, 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 ever. And when I started working full time back in like 2007, um, I would go and work my ass off for usually 10 hours a day, at 10 to 12 hours a day. And then I would come home and the bed would be a mess and it would just feel like, oh, I, you know, I've come through all that and I get home and it's a mess. And so I started making my bed before I left the house every day. Just that one thing made such a huge difference. And this year, uh, actually the last few years, there's just been a big concerted effort to get rid of excess shit in my house. So now, you know, when I'm in my space, when I'm in my sanctuary here, um, it's just, it's it's beautiful, it's welcoming, it makes me feel like I am well and truly home. Turn my light down just a little bit there. I feel like I'm blinding you guys. Okay, so that's pleasure. Now let's go to the Ten of Cups, which is satiety. Pursuit of pleasure crowned with perfect success, but incomplete. Matters arranged and settled as wished, lasting success, peacemaking and generosity. So we've got even more pleasure, but it's not quite complete. It's being pursued. Um, that matters will be settled as you wish, settled and arranged as you wish. So they do have kind of a fortune telly, or maybe, you know, it's just saying, well, I, I, duh, it's just reiterating exactly what I was just saying. Arrange things as you wish them to be call on your pleasure. What do I like? And you know, some people don't even know what they like. 
particularly um, I don't know you, you move out of your parents house and and you move in to, to a college if you go to college and stay there you get an apartment and put posters on the wall and shit and then you hit adulthood and it's like well what do I really like and a lot of people just fall back on the the style that their parents had because they figure that's the way things are but it is worth the time to get to know yourself in terms of what do I like to look at what colors do I like what textures do I like do I like big puffy things with lots of throw pillows and blankets and fringes and things or do I like neat clean lines and streamlines and what do I like as far as lights do I like plants worth finding out all those things and then arranging things the way you want them to be um, so yeah let's look at what uh, Lady Harris says satiety Mars in Pisces Malkuth Mars in Pisces Oof. the cups are arranged on the tree of life and a great lotus overshadows them exhaustion which comes from expended energy is expressed okay so they're talking she's talking about exhaustion here and she's the one that did these cards I don't see exhaustion there satiety is just I've had enough so this is saying I, I've had enough that's what being satiated is that's enough thank you very much so again looking at the concept of enough what is enough for you to have not you know wealthy I want to be wealthy beyond my wildest dreams we're, we're taught in America that that's what we want to be we want to be wealthy and millionaires and everything else but I want to have enough and then you get to define what enough is all right let's look at the Sun The sun says glory, gain, riches, triumph, pleasure, again, frankness, truth, shamelessness, manifestation, recovery from sickness, but sometimes sudden death. And that's not ill dignified. Ill dignified is arrogance and vanity. Recovery from sickness, but sometimes sudden death. What the fuck? Yikes. All right. So triumph, pleasure, truth shamelessness I think that means just having um, not being burdened by shame not I mean the the idea of shamelessness is kind of like if you're shameless if you're behaving in a shameless way then you're not showing any shame at all and and doing very shameful things so that word shamelessness is a little slippery here okay son Sun Resh. This card shows the simple human approach to the mysteries. The sun is the lord of life, liberty, light, and love. The children are dancing with butterfly wings. They are surrounded by the signs of the zodiac, showing the different houses through which the sun passes. Okay, dancing with butterfly wings. The lord of life, liberty, light, and love. Okay. So again, get your surroundings the way you need them to be. Find any way you can to bring pleasure into your life. That's what I'm doing right here, shooting these videos. They bring me a lot of pleasure, and um, it's, it's really helpful. It's what I need right now. So I hope you enjoyed that. This is one of the classic decks that probably should be in everybody's collection because, come on, it's Crowley, um, particularly if you're a witch or a pagan. You might want to get the big ones. And some people, I know with this deck, a lot of people would read just the Major Arcana. I think you might have been able to get this deck in just the Major Arcana in big format. Not sure about that. I might look it up. I might not. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and please share my stuff with people you think would also like it. Click the notification so you know when I put up a video because it's so hard to remember that I put one up every single frickin' day. And boy, am I um, working my computer right now. I have something uploading to YouTube. I have something producing in my CyberLink, and I'm recording this, and so there's, there's lots and lots going on. Anyhow, stay safe until I see you tomorrow. Wash your hands, wear your masks, Black Lives Matter. Be kind to each other. Be good to each other. Pray, 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 pray. Lift us up, everybody. I really appreciate you being there for me. Till I see you again, this is the Zen Witch. Blessed be.